I'm reading from the King James Bible. <clears throat> Turn in your King James Bible to 2 Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 3 in 2 Peter chapter 2. Beginning at verse 1 on to verse 3. But there were men, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Tell me this isn't happening today. People who are bringing in damnable heresies and denying the Lord that bought them. And they're going to follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. For an example, the those easy believism types who say just believe and receive, and there isn't a changed life that happens after salvation. They can go on living like the world without any change or conviction in their heart about what they're doing. And the lost will see, psh, yeah, look at that guy. He says he's a Christian. Look what he's doing. Look how he's talking. Look what he's looking at. Look what he's watching. And you're a Christian, huh? Verse 3 again, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Making merchandise of you? with feigned words, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 9. Just right across the page, or turn the page if it's like that in your King James Bible that you're reading. 2 Peter chapter 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. <laughs> God's not coming back. There is no catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble? <laughs> yeah, we got time. For this they are willingly ignorant of, dumb on purpose, that by the word of God, lowercase w, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, lowercase w, referring to the written word, the King James Bible, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, making reference to the time of Jacob's trouble. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a reference to the millennial kingdom, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack 
concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yeah, come on. I've only had this uh, Bible for two years and it's already well, <laughs> well worn in. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 on to verse 58 to close out the chapter. We are in the last times. Something is going to happen coming soon. And um, here's what it is. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 on to verse 58 to close out the chapter. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. <laughs> the last trump, that's the sound of the trumpet. It describes what it is, for the trumpet shall sound. That's what it means. And for those of you here in America who are a little kooky about what that says, um, that that's a reference to the American president right now, <laughs> um, you need to do a little bit more study, my friend. Okay. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Just like that. Excuse me. Just like that. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. You would not know what sin is unless the law was there. And the wages of sin is death. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Go back to verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. The catching away of the body of Christ was a mystery that was revealed unto Paul. I believe that Jesus made reference to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. You know it as the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? In John chapter 10, okay? He makes a reference to it the very first time, okay? Paul the Apostle was, as it is said, pre-trib. And that's what he taught. This is about the pre-tribulation rapture. Behold, I shew you a mystery. 
We shall not all sleep, meaning die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Something is coming, where suddenly, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, people are going to boop, disappear. Just like that. As a believer, as a Bible-believing Christian, King James Bible-believing Christian, we're going to hear our names called. And we're going to be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Those who are dead, who died trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to be raised. We're all going to go up to be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 on to verse 58, deal with the pre-tribulation rapture, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? If you are truly saved, born again, what do you think a changed life is? Okay, putting on the new man. I saw in a comment, not one of my own, but I just saw a comment once where someone said, being born again is for the Jews, not for us. That's a hyper-dispensationalist, by the way. If you hear anyone say that statement, that being born again is for the Jews and not for us in the church age, you're dealing with a hyper-dispensationalist. Because the hyper-dispensationalist, who is easy believism, has a problem with putting on the new man. Paul's changed life gospel after salvation. Okay? Your mind changes before salvation. Okay? That's the repentance before you are saved. You realize that you're a sinner going to hell, that you can't save yourself, and that you need to trust on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will save you. Call on his name have faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood that he shed on the cross, and you'll be saved. But you come to him as a broken, contrite sinner. Okay? This is talking about the pre-tribulation rapture, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And we read in Peter, Second Peter, but there are scoffers in the last days. I purposely didn't read out of Timothy because I have covered those verses before. And if you've seen any videos of mine, you've probably heard me make a reference to those. That in the last times, in the last, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Well, perilous times are here, my friend. Scripture is being fulfilled before our eyes. And there are those who believe that Christians go through the time of Jacob's trouble, which totally contradicts every single person who believes that the body of Christ, the Christians of today, are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, where God takes away his attention from dealing with both Jews and Gentiles and deals specifically with the Jewish people, as is prophesied in Scripture. There are those who believe and actually teach that we, the body of Christ, are going to go through that. And during that time, you can lose your salvation if you take the mark of the beast. Okay? The greatest single event that is coming is the catching away of the body of Christ. And the lost, the uh, false brethren that crept in unawares, and those who bring in damnable heresies are preparing 
false converts and uh, the lost for this time period. When you have King James Bible believing Christians, the stubborn, um, uh, cultic King James Bible believing Christians, warning the people about what's coming. Someone asks you about, you know, the pre tribulation rapture. Take them to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. That's a good start. Okay? Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 18. Okay? 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 on to verse 18 to finish out the chapter but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep dead that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope we're going to touch on that one real quick here for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised first, shall rise first, excuse me. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words now note to meet the Lord in the air okay first Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 ver through 18 is not talking about the second coming and this is not teaching you that Jesus second coming okay we who are saved, we're going to hear the trump. He's going to call us. We're, we, the saved, are going to see the Lord. You know, that's what it's talking about. He's going to come for us and take us up to him. He's in heaven. How do you know? To meet the Lord is in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. Okay? This is again talking about the pre-tribulation rapture. This is not talking about the second coming. This is talking about the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay? That's what this is talking about. If you are saved, born again, and you believe God and His Word, if you're saved, if you're a saved Bible-believing Christian, you're going to be called up. You're going to be taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And recently, if you've had any dealings here on YouTube, um, things are happening. Things are stirring up. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> I, I took my place out here, but uh, go back to go back to First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-eight. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Verse 18 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The dead is going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up. What does it say here? 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the pre-tribulation rapture. The body of Christ is going to be taken out before the time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. We are going to be taken out, and then the Antichrist is going to be revealed. Okay? The hope of us, the Christian, the Bible-believing Christian today in the church age, is the fact that we are going to be caught up. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. See, hold on, let me read it to you. Go to Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Uh, before you were saved, did you do that? There were some that did live, you know, soberly and righteously, but without God, those are just works, and they don't mean anything. Okay? Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not talking about the second coming. He's going to appear to us, the saved, and he's going to call us up. We're going to be taken up. Okay? The lost world is not going to see him. How is that possible? We'll find out, won't we? Ask him. I don't know. But I know what the text says. That we're going to get caught up and then all hell is going to break loose. Seven year time period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel's 70th week. It's also called. Okay. So, when it says the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, description of the one person, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us. Oh, we're in verse 14, by the way, in Titus chapter 2 who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Our hope for today, saved Bible-believing Christians, is the pre-tribulation rapture being called out of here before the time of Jacob's trouble. If you are saved and born again, your hope, the blessed hope, is that we are going to be caught up and we're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Our works are going to be tried. We ourselves are going to be saved. You know, our rewards, that kind of stuff. How long are we going to have a millennial inheritance or whatnot? You know, whatever. But we are going to be with the Lord. Okay? There are two judgments. There's the judgment seat of Christ for us, the saved. And then there's the great white throne of judgment for you, the lost people who might watch this. Okay? And those who are dead and in hell, like my mother, are going to come up at the great white throne of judgment and then be cast off forever into eternal torment. Okay? But our hope, Christian, is the rapture. 
is the catching away of the body of Christ. That we get to flee from the most horrific, hellish time period that will ever be on the face of the earth. And everything is in place right now. The technology is there for the mark of the beast. <laughs> False doctrines and heresies are rampant. <clears throat> You're called part of a cult if you take God at his word, his perfect preserved word, the King James Bible, if you believe this and stick for this only and call the other ones uh, Roman Catholic counterfeits, Okay, look at what that Pope guy has said of late. I personally believe that the pre-tribulation rapture, the catching away, is going to happen very soon. I'm, I'm not setting no date, I'm just saying. I think it's going to happen soon. I don't know if it's going to happen in my lifetime. I'm 43 years of age. But there's a younger generation that might get caught up while they live. One of the people that I'm subscribed to, this JT does, um, he's only like 18, 19 years old, gives an old guy like me encouragement to know that there is a young guy out there of this generation, but not of this world, who is right in his doctrines, who believes the King James Bible, who is being brought up in nurture by true godly preachers. And there's this um, younger guy, younger than me, um, uh, I don't, I forget what his channel name is. I think he's in his 30s. But still, that's a different generation than what I grew up in. Okay? There are younger King James Bible believers out there that are going to carry on the torch for us old farts <laughs> when we die, if we don't get caught up before that. So there is hope. Our hope today is to go to be forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You know, the book of Revelation describes the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's always so interesting to me that so many people try to find modern doctrine in the book of Revelation. But when you look in Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 1 and 2, let's read them, Revelation chapter 4. After this, uh, one verses 1 and 2, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. John experienced the rapture. He went into the future, so to say. He saw it. He saw the catching away. Verse 1 is where we, the body of Christ, get taken up. That's what I believe. And from here, all from chapter 4 on to verse 19, Verse, uh, verse 19, chapter 19, verse 11, this is the second coming. And I saw heaven open. Revelation 19, verse 11. Verse 11 on to verse 18. <clears throat> and I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word, capital W, of God. 
This is Jesus Christ. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. I believe that the armies that follow after him are going to be us, the saints of today that get caught up in the pre-tribulation rapture, that we come down as part of his army to whoop the snot out of the Antichrist and his 200 million man army. The largest army that has ever been seen. Okay? We're going to come down with him. Cruel and reign. The millennial kingdom. Verse 15. In Revelation chapter 19. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of and wrath of Almighty God. Okay? And he hath on his vesture, his clothing, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I've actually heard someone say out of uh, uh, verse 16 that Jesus Christ himself had a tattoo. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. That's the second coming. Okay. You look on YouTube today, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on as far as the Christian congregation or community. I don't like that word, but there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. And some of you might know what I'm referring to. And I'm going to tell you right now that I do not believe in three gods. I believe in one God, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, amen, the Godhead, that's what I believe. But you got people making countless videos t talking about how one guy is a heretic and then you got some uh, other guys out there preaching truth and being attacked for it. It's getting worse. You know, if you're one of these modern apostate Alexandrian Christians, Laodicean Christians, if you will, who think that modern Christianity is getting better, I feel really sorry for you. I made a, uh, before this video, a salvation video where I went quickly through a bunch of scriptures because um, I truly believe that the catching away is coming soon. When? I don't know. When? I don't know. I'll know it when it happens, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and so will you if you're saved. But I want to leave you with this. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 58. I want to leave you with this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You might not know what to believe. You might have a bit of confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, my friend, just so you know. 
but you might be saying to yourself, who do I believe? Do I believe what Brian says? Or do I believe what all the other people are saying? Huh? Personally, just so you know, I believe what Brian says. And I'm going to leave it like that. But I find it very interesting that um, some of these people here on YouTube have this mentality, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. There's a certain individual who I'm not going to name because I want nothing to do with that guy. I know I want to stay as far away from him, you know, let Jeremy and Brian and other people deal with that guy. That Go ahead, go ahead. And I, I, I'm out of that one. But um, there's a guy who recently defended someone who he called a heretic. You might know who I'm, what I'm referring to. Um, and if you know, good for you. But it's, it's interesting that all the people that have pointed at other people about being heretics, yet they're all grouping together on this Trinity thing. And then you have a select few over here standing for the Godhead thing. And I believe in the biblical Godhead. I have said the word Trinity before, yes, of course. And that's my fault, you know, but um, friends, you stick with this. Be in this, the King James Bible. Read this yourself. Read the scriptures. Search the scriptures to see if these things are so. If you don't know something or understand something, ask God for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Ask for revelation of the truth. The Holy Ghost shall guide you into all truth. The spirit of truth, which will guide you into all truth. We saw, we see that, you know, that Jesus opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures, you know. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And like I said, I have never met one person or heard of one person who believes that the body of Christ goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. I have not met one who, is, who rightly divides the word of truth. I haven't met one. You know, brethren, sisters, it's coming soon. When? I don't know. In my lifetime, I don't know. But it's very convicting to me personally when I see all this stuff going on on YouTube, attack videos and this and that and that and this and this and that, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Are you searching the scriptures daily? Are you diligent in your search of truth in the word? Are you doing as we're supposed to, being a witness unto the lost outside your front door when you walk out your door. You know, there's a, you know, what are, what are you going to be caught doing when the Lord calls us up? Hmm? What are you going to be caught doing when the Lord Jesus Christ calls your name, Christian, and you're caught up? Hmm? Think about that. Are you going to be sitting there watching some stupid Hollywood movie or some stupid Hollywood TV show and then the Lord calls you by name and you get caught up in the rapture? Hmm? Are you going to be backsliding in sin or something like that? Huh? Think about that. 
Think about that, my friend. We are in the last times, and the church age is coming to a rapid close, I believe, personally. And as we read, you know, they say, oh, it's, it's always been this way. It's just going to keep going on, you know. Where's the promise of his coming and that kind of stuff? Nah. As we read in Second Peter, okay, there are false prophets, there are false teachers who are bringing in damnable heresies. Easy believe in it, uh, easy believism is one of them. Calvinism, uh, uh, hyper dispensationalism. I've run into those people before. Uh, that was a mess. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Don't give up on the book. Don't give up on the Lord. The blessed hope is the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Be steadfast, unmovable. We are to expose the false prophets yet, but you know what? The minute you think that you're gonna you're called to expose someone, pray about it because if you look on YouTube, someone has probably already exposed the person that you think you're being called to expose. And I'm not saying anything like, hey, maybe the Lord is calling you personally to expose someone. But I'm seeing things. And I'm also seeing people acting like clones, which is actually kind of bothersome to me. You know, really. So, <sighs> be encouraged. Brethren, sisters, there is a rapture, and it's a pre-tribulation rapture, and it's coming. Are you ready? That's it. Take from this what you will. I love you. You have a good night.